Yo, what is up guys? It's Guilty. I got another gamer since I guide for you today. Um, if you missed the last video, the last one was on wrist and versus arm aiming, so definitely go check that out. It's also on the Gamer Sensei website as well. Also, be sure to check out my coaching page. Uh, I'll put it in the link in the description as well as Toronto Esports coaching page if you do have a team and you're interested in getting coached. Uh, but this video is going to be a little bit more simple. A lot of the stuff you may already know in here, um, but it's going to go over graphic settings and just some stuff that you may have missed in your controls. Uh, it's going to be geared towards more people that who have just started the game or people who have just you know come from different games like you know League of Legends or you know. MMOs and stuff that may be new to FPS. So I'm going to go over a couple of things that a lot of you FPS veterans may already know. Um, stuff like refresh rate, just simple graphic settings and stuff like that. Uh, but I think you may find something interesting in this video that you may not know. Uh, anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you later. Alright guys, so we're going to go ahead and jump into options here. Uh, the thing we're going to say for last is resolution refresh rate because it's going to be a big part of this video and it's kind of a more complicated thing to explain. Um, so going forward from there, field of view, this is basically how close or far away things appear. The higher your field of view, the faster you appear to move and farther away things appear. So you can kind of give you an uh, idea. This is at 103 and this is at 80, which honestly this is all personal preference. I personally don't mess with this, uh, but you know, teach their own. So. Uh, moving on from there, we have limit FPS, which is going to be basically you have a couple options here. You have custom, which you can set whatever your frame rate you want to cap at. So I use minus 200. Uh, I can obviously get 300, but the, the whole idea of the custom limit FPS is that if you have, for example, your computer can hit 300 FPS, but it's constantly dropping and you want a smooth experience, you can lower it. So you take whatever the lowest frame rate you'll ever get, for example, mine's 200, and you lock it at 200. That way, if like, say you're, you're playing the game, then all of a sudden a lot of stuff happens on screen, your FPS is going to drop a lot. So you will feel it when you're moving your mouse, you'll feel it in game, it'll become choppy. So that's the idea behind this. You just lower it to where it's never going to drop, and mine, like I said, is at 200. And now I won't feel when it drops and it won't become choppy. Uh, the other option here you, you have is display base, which is going to lock the frame rate at your monitor's refresh rate. So my monitor is a 144 hertz monitor, so when I set display based on, it's going to lock it at 154. Uh, if you have a 60 hertz monitor, it's going to lock it at 61, and if you have a 120 hertz monitor, it's going to lock it at I think 120. All right, guys. Now it's on to the big one here, and that's refresh rate. Um, I'm not going to get too technical with the definition. There are plenty of articles online if you want to delve into the technical side of things. Um, but basically, what a high refresh rate monitor does is it gets rid of a lot of the motion blur and makes your game feel smoother overall. Um, it isn't necessarily an advantage, but it's a quality of life type of thing. You know, once you play at 120 or 144 hertz, you'll never want to go back to 60 hertz. Um, I will say there are there are some advantages, at least for me personally. I notice that it makes it easier for me to track and hit shots that require a quick reaction time. Um, so something like you know a Widowmaker peaking really quick or, you know, a time where I have to hit a shot and I only have a, you know, split second to hit it because the character is only on the, you know, the screen for, you know, a short period of time. That kind of stuff, I do notice is a lot easier to hit at 120 or 144 hertz. Um, this is probably due to the fact that refresh rate is basically how mon how quickly the monitor can, you know, update the image on screen. Um, now, before you go out and get, you know, a 120 hertz monitor, 144 hertz monitor, there is something you guys need to know. Um, so, first things first. Uh, you want to make sure that you can get at least 120 frames or 144 frames in game. And the reason that is, is in order to get the benefits of a 144 hertz monitor or a 120 hertz monitor, you need to at least get that FPS. Um, so, if, for example, if you're not going to go out and buy a 144 hertz monitor, you know, right now, and you only get 60, you know, frames per second in game, that's not going to slide. You're not going to get any benefits from it. In fact, if you get 144 frames but you constantly drop at below 144 frames per second, um, you're not going to you're going to notice actually a um, a change in the game like when you're moving your mouse it's going to be very very choppy because it's constantly going above 144 and it's constantly dropping below i had this issue in beta um, i eventually got it fixed and sorted out but it's something that you want to make sure you know before you go spend a 300 you know 500 dollars on a monitor that you're able to get that um you know that fps in game before you go out and buy one um the next part of this video is going to talk about you know how to get higher you know frame rate and all that so this may the next part of this video may help um, but that's definitely something you want to look out and get if you do uh, plan on taking FPS games seriously because this is something that, you know, you know, it may not get the, the benefits from like playing League, but it is a huge thing in uh, FPS games to have a high refresh rate monitor. You know, like I said, if, if I had to choose between a gaming monitor and a gaming mouse, I'd choose a monitor every time. Um, it's just something that offers such a smoother experience and, you know, it's like, you know, going back and running Windows off of a hard drive after you've played on, you know, you've ran Windows on an SSD. It's something that you just don't want to switch back to. So definitely go out. I'll put a couple in the description. Um, 
if you're you know interested in getting one you know generally if you get any gaming monitor like BenQ or anything like that they're gonna have good high refresh rate monitors there's a couple favorites that I'll post in the description like I said but definitely you know look into getting one if you plan on taking the game seriously or any FPS game seriously for that matter um, because it's definitely something that you uh, you definitely want so moving on from there we have a couple other things as well uh, the big one being render scale uh, render scale is just how good the game looks. I'm not really sure exactly overall what it affects. I just know the higher you set it, the better the game looks, and the lower you set it, the worse the game looks. Uh, in beta, there was an issue with render scale, and I still notice it mostly on 150 and 200. But basically, the higher you set it, you'll start to notice that there isn't a one-to-one -one with your mouse movement on screen. So, like, basically, when I move my mouse across my mouse pad, it'll be a, del a bit delayed on screen. I only notice this when set to 150 or 200. But I do know that it also is apparently affecting 100% refresh, or sorry, 100% render scale. So you can choose between 75 and 100. Honestly, I don't notice that much difference in graphics at 75. So I generally play at 75. Um, 50 starts to look a little bad, and I don't want to really, you know, when things are farther away, it can kind of be hard to see what you're shooting at. So I try to stick to 75. Uh, you know, maybe you 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 know you don't have problems with uh, you know seeing things. So, you know, like I said, generally try to stick to 175 or 50. Don't mess with uh, 150 or 200 because you're going to start to notice a little bit of input lag uh, as far as your mouse movements go. Uh, the next thing you'll notice is I have a couple things set to high and a couple things set to low. Um, the whole idea behind this is I want the models, the character models themselves, like the guns and the other characters, to kind of pop out. So anything related to like effects, so like explosions and stuff like that, I have set to low because I don't want it to you know block my view and have anything like the model details, shadow details, and texture quality set to high so that the character models themselves stick out. Um, another thing you might want to sh shut off specifically if you're, you know, you're playing and you're noticing you're getting a lot of frame rate, this ambient occlusion, local reflections, anything with lighting, um, even shadow detail. If you don't have a computer that's really good, uh, shadow detail, try not to set it high. Generally shy away from anything that's ultra. Um, even on anti-aliasing, I try to, I don't even run ultra or high. Um, but I do, I would suggest playing with anti-aliasing on. This is going to get rid of like jaggies and stuff. So anything that's curved is going to get rid of jaggies. You can still kind of see them, but it specifically helps for like characters that are like, um, you know, hiding behind cover, like, and you can only see their head. If you have anti-aliasing set to low, it's kind of hard to make out what's going on. So I try to set mine on high or medium. Um, like I said, shy away from things that are ultra just because it's going to tax your computer quite a bit. But definitely turn things like ambient occlusion, local reflections, uh, you know, shadow detail even. I have mine to set to high. But if you have a you know, lower end computer, it's definitely something you want to turn down. Uh, dynamic reflections, local fog. Don't even have local fog on. Um, anyway, that's mostly it for the graphic options. Moving on to sound. There isn't really much in here. The one thing I will say is, you know, Adobe, Adobe Atmos for headphones. Definitely turn that on. It's going to just help with sound and, you know, directional sound specifically. Um, like I said, there's not much in sound to talk about. Now, the big thing that I want to talk about, uh, at least in controls, is Allied Health Bars. So, um, what Allied Health Bars is, and you want to have it on, it's by uh, default it's off, and it honestly shouldn't even be an option because it's so important. But you want to make sure you have this on for all heroes. So basically what it is, is it will show your teammates health when they're low. Uh, regardless of whether you're a support or whether you're a, you know, you can be Widowmaker, you can be anything. But the reason it's so important is say you're a Roadhog or, for example, say you're a Winston, all right? And you're playing solo queue and you, your teammates aren't communicating, but you want to jump in and you want to start an attack. So, uh, say you can't see your, your teammates' HP or whatever and you jump in and then you're like, hey, guys, why didn't you go in? Oh, we were all one HP. You know, you had no idea because you can't see their HP. If you have LED health bars on, you can see your teammates' HP when it's low. So it's super important when you want to kind of gauge when you want to start an attack or an engagement or something like that. So make sure this is turned on because it's super, super important. Like I said, especially when you're playing solo queue like I do, I love to have this on because I can kind of gauge, you know, what's happening, whether I want to go back into a fight on King of the Hill when everyone's dying or whether I want to back up. Um, next thing moving forward is specifically for characters that scope in like Anna and Widowmaker. This is going to be your zoom sensitivity, relative zoom sensitivity. It's 30 by default. I play at 35 personally. Uh, I'm pretty sure 50 is one to one, meaning that your scope in sensitivity is the same as your hip fire sensitivity. Uh, I don't play at 50. I know some people that do. I personally play at 35, like I said, uh, just because it's always what I've used since beta. Um, and the same applies to Widowmaker as well. So if you go down to Widowmaker, you have the same option as well too. Um, obviously, this kind of stuff, if you guys haven't checked here, this may be new to you. But you can change your crosshairs. You can change your crosshair color. Uh, quick tip for Soldier 76. Say you want to play with dynamic crosshair on, which is called Bloom in Overwatch. Um, and you want to use the dot, right? So if you, shoot, if you see me shoot here, I don't see the dynamic crosshair at all. But if I go into game here, go back, and I change it to... Hold on, let me get to Soldier here. And I change it to Circle. I still have the dot. 
but I still get the dynamic cross here. So that's a quick tip. It's kind of weird. It doesn't really make any sense, but it's definitely something I would recommend if you want to play with a dot, but still want to use Bloom. Um, other than that, there's not really much in here as far as controls go. Most of this is personal preference. Me personally, I only change the melee key, which I use for F. I don't use the side mouse button because I use push to talk for my mouse and I use it on my side mouse buttons. So other than that, I know this has kind of been a quick video, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, for the next video, I'm going to try to do something more in depth. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of juggling a couple ideas here, but maybe if you have any ideas, put them down in the comments below. The big one I kind of want to do, which is going to take more time, is go over maps and different, you know, how to de play defense on a certain map or how to play attack on a certain map and just different spots you can get to. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have any other ideas or maybe if you want to do the map thing, you know, let me know uh, and I'll try to work start on a map guide for each map and maybe put the map that you guys want. Uh, King's Row is a fairly common map and mostly everyone knows how to play it, but maybe, you know, a breakdown of Oasis since it's so new might be a good map to do. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.